when he's applying his leg drive obviously for me it's screaming out there's obviously a technique a technique thing there technique deficit yeah, yeah? Like I say, what I, what I would do is stuff like this for, and obviously to help you guys with your coaching as well. Like, I I just get it. Like, if you if you're giving him feedback on that, I could see. I could I can only speculate what I think's going to happen when he adds weight. So, I think what a lot of people will do is like jump in and give him some like black blanket feedback for the sake of it. Whereas actually, I just want to see what happens. At, 80, 90 kilos. Yeah, yeah. I think we'd be, I think it'd just like. Small bits of breakdown. Yeah, yeah, I just think yeah, it'd uh, like, yeah. magnify the error a little bit. I think it can. I can. I can see what what might happen. Um, but let's let's see what happens as we go up. Add some weight in there. Yeah, mate, I completely agree. And I could imagine the scenario, put 115 on, 120, I can imagine him misgrooving it, failing it, going straight back in and then just sending it easily. Yeah, yeah. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. Does that make any sense? Yeah, no, it can be quite hit and miss. Yeah. And have really good sessions and have really frustrating sessions. Well, <laughs> Like it knocks me back. Yeah, I did notice that. And then it takes me a second to find like mid foot a lot of energy before I even think the duck. You're wasting energy on the clean out with it. Yeah. Back and forward. Mm. Hey, have you got anything like how could he improve that clean? What's is anything screaming out at you? Or what do you I'm what not, do what no, do you No, I know I could probably think about like that elbows up cue stuff. Again. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, watch his clean again. Yeah, I, th I think yeah, this yeah. is like a, there's like a, a simple maybe gain. Just, just too behind it, maybe. You go over it a little bit more. Yeah, I'll, let, <laughs> I'll explain why I think that's happening in a minute and see, see if Sim, Sim can do it. Is it, it looks like what you do for me on the clean it looks like you're putting you kind of you, you, you're using your kind of like hip extension back extension a bit more than like you, you're not really using the you can yeah exactly so you so instead of like you, it looks like you're going to here and your weight through your, it looks like you're fully extended here oh, right you weight through your heels and then to finish off the rep yeah. How, how do I finish off the rep there? You have to go backwards. Yeah. You have to go backwards. You have to use back extension mm -hmm. and probably a little bit of upper body. Yeah? A little bit of bicep to finish off. Which this, I want you to think of this as like, it's easy for us because we've got fucking fuck all muscle mass, but like, this is a real limited resource, the upper body. You want to save your upper body. 
engagement till that kind of last bit where you where, yeah. where you're locking out the press. Yeah, in my opinion. Um, so so let so let let so the way that we can we, we can do that on the clean is trying by trying to trying to relax your upper body a little bit more and, and actually rely on the exposure from the legs a little bit more. So you're staying your weight staying free free heels. So you're not you're not exploding up and extending up. I think just popping up, up onto those toes, you know, like a kind of like a little jump. And I think you're just instantly gonna get, get a bit more power. And I think you can trade this extension that power yeah. for the thing what you're doing where you're going into extension and, and finishing off with your your arms right. so i just want you to think of the yeah. cue going back to the constraints lad of actually in, instead of thinking about what you're doing with your lower body just think about keeping this keeping this completely chilled and relaxed like pieces of string with hooks on the end yeah. and then oh, yeah, because you're, you're going to have to do something a little bit different with the lower body to compensate for that and let's see what happens i think because the uh, moment Belt less than that. Yeah. Because when I'm belted up and that, I just think about hooking the log with the belt. Yeah. And that's it. But even but even using the even using the, the shelf there, the principle stays the same. Yeah, even if it's hooking there or, or you're driving it from your hips because it's beltless, the principles of that pop. Yeah. That pop and that drive, that saves this. Right, okay. Yeah? You yeah. can trade this for that. Yeah, not, not only more energy efficient, but that's actually putting you in a <coughs> in a position that you have to like kind of adjust to get your rack before you press. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, whereas I think if you practice this this little pop, not only are you going to be able to keep more relaxed here, but you're going to get you can imagine those reps where you're clean to bob on and you're like, shit, I can go straight away. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Whereas Kyle's having to like kind of recalibrate himself. Yeah. Yeah. Let, let's go again. So relax arms. You just pop up onto the toes, yeah? That's just gonna... Power. 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 Instantly. Yeah. Better. And that's just one rep. That is just one yeah, rep. Yeah. Right. Going back to that principle of... Right, go and do 100 reps at 80. Yeah. Just look at the clean. Easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fit perfectly. Yeah. But it like went back in at 130. It's just it, it, it's just it's super fast. Whereas he used to stay flat footed, weight through my heels. So I wouldn't I, would, I, I wouldn't even be able to clean one there. Yeah. Like if I didn't if I ever do that. Yeah. yeah. How to cue the dip and how to like it. Because I've went through phases where I'm thinking just hips down and it feels okay, but then it feels like I'm a little bit too through my heels. I'm not active my quads enough. Yeah. And then lately I'm just thinking just break at the knees and just try and keep that vertical torso and that's all I'm thinking because I feel I get yes. that bit more access to my quads. Definitely, definitely. So you so you agree with that principle and that's why the fucking your dumbbells are unbelievable. Because you look at that you look at that video of his dumbbell and his torso is just straight, straight down. With the barbell and the axle you're probably doing the same thing and, you, and you've got such an easier time controlling that vertical torso with the barbell and the axle because of the distribution of the weight. Whereas this, it's a bit more of a puzzle that you haven't worked out yet that, feel, that feels right. So what you need to kind of do is take that approach, what we've discussed about what I find really impressive about what you've done on the deadlift and that, rather than giving blank cues let the object rather than thinking oh I've tried these I've tried these that like let the object teach you what where, where you should be. Yeah. Yeah. You know that the vertical torso logically you know that that's a non-negotiable. Yeah. yeah. So actually what you might find with lock you might find that oh well, actually to get this vertical torso what I'm actually doing and people are saying hips back to load the hips and use this power. That's making me hinge forward. I'm actually having to push my knees a lot further foot. Well, people say this is wrong. That's what I mean, like, yeah. when I've cued hips down on my own head, I feel like I have to be so much more on my heels to actually maintain that vertical torso. Even though, even though on a video it looks good, but the, I'm, that's what I mean, I'm not accessing my quads, I'm not getting that pop that I should be getting. Yeah. 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 So, I actually think getting comfortable getting the, getting, the, getting the knees through a slightly bigger range of motion and block yeah. is going to 
because the weight the weight's out in front of you, you have to access those knees a little bit more. That that's what I feel. Yeah. I think um, a lot of people cue the kind of the breaking at the hips, you know, up getting into the hips, but I just find you you're so close, such a small margin for error of losing that that to, that torso. Yeah. Whereas if we kind of so the, the, the little cue that I, I that I like for kind of helping you find that those quads is actually which to quite like a number as well is finding the rack and then in, if you if you if you stand bolt upright like that with your knees locked out right and you you imagine you're in the log rack position right like how how do you initiate the dip there if you don't if you don't really think about it like what happens as you initiate the dip where do you get pulled where do I get? Yeah, it's at the would... bottom of the dip. I feel like my hips going to get pulled forward a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Is that something like when I'm here? I just think at the moment, I just like just break at my knees and just try and stay yeah. upright. And then it just it, it, so, it feels like sometimes it can go either way. So what what I think would be a good little drill for you to try would be actually finishing it clean. And again, we'll drop the weight on this. We'll drop it down to sixty actually. <laughs> It's so complicated, so we want to simplify it, make it as simple as possible. You just said yeah. that, oh, go here, and then I'm thinking about breathing at the knees and whatever. There's a lot that can go on. We can take one of those steps away. I think it's going to, going to be helpful. So we can take that, that step away by actually in the wrap position. And this is just for the sake of learning what to feel. Like instead of going bolt upright like that, and then having to think about, right, what do you do now? If I don't, if I don't think about it, and I'm fully locked out there. Kind of, it's hard not to kind of hinge like that, and then I'm compromising that torso angle, yeah? Whereas um, if I go like kind of soft at the knees, right. and kind of, I'm almost going into like 10% of the dip almost, yeah? But I'm actually, if, if I'm just waiting in that position, I'm finding like easier to learn where, to, like I've already almost like... Opened up. Yeah, yeah you've, you've opened, opened up, open. so you're not yeah. having to, you're not, you're not having to think about, right, breaking the knees now. Yeah. Because you're already in there. Yeah. You're just thinking about, right, well, right. let's get, right. let's move the lock down and then I'll, yeah. yeah, because okay. you're already in there. So clean it here. Just look at the difference. See if you can see, and I'm going to try and make it so subtle because I know you know what you're looking for. Yeah, yeah. Here. Here. Right. There. Yep. Versus. Can you see the subtle dip forward there? Yeah. This is my weight through my heels. Versus. Yeah. 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 You didn't see the difference there. And what, what I'm able to do there because I've broken at the knees a little bit. I'm not, I'm not having to think about the dip. And I'm actually feeling like. So you're not really cueing anything outside, it's like a soft knee. That's just, that's just, oh. Soft knee. So if you go so soft at the knees and then going back to the approach of what we were discussing before about letting the object teach you where you should be. Yeah. Yeah. And then once you're in that position and you find that weightless position here with the soft knee, then it's just about, right, well, I just need to move, as a non-negotiable, I need to move that log perpendicular to the floor just to load the leg drive and then send it back up in the straight line. Yeah, that's what you need to do. Logically, that's what you need to do, don't you? Yeah. So let's see if we can do it, Cal. So pause in the rack. Common error. A little bit, little bit more knee bend. Almost like that's it. Go there. That's better. So when you catch after pressing, do you catch like? In that soft knee, you don't catch. But like yeah. when you bring it back to rack, do oh, you? Right, it? Oh, I don't. I just chuck it. You just, just go. Like, it you don't even think about yeah, it. Yeah. Not bobbly centric. Yeah. Right. No, okay. I, um, but yeah, but yeah, yeah. What, 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 I, I, I can feel it. I can feel it a little bit. Like, okay. That that one that I said was good. Yeah. What you started off with was like you've gone from bolt upright to there, 
Whereas actually, let, let, on the next one, let's add, exaggerate it a little bit more for the sake of. I'm not, this isn't what we, this is what what I'd recommend you to do when you're doing one twenty one thirty. This is just to try and get you to train to feel. You know, like what you're doing with you. You're going up to you on the seventy one dumbbell before you go over to the the big one, and you're getting that getting that feeling good before you like. This is what I do with, like, say, empty log, just to just to find that perfect bar. Yeah, Tell you, you find that, that bar. Yeah. yeah. So you, you could do, like, say, five triples at sixty or something yeah. before your log session. It's not going to cost you anything, and it's just going to get that that line feeling better, yeah. definitely. Yeah. So let, let's just go go again, but this time in the rack. Almost like rather than just softies. That's what, even like a quarter squat or something. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see if we can get that bar back feeling good. Lower, lower, lower. Right, let's start there, that looks good. That dip is better. It's like, almost like trying to feel like a bit of muscular fatigue. And then go on that last one. No, it feels great, mate. Thank you. And then uh, one, one more little cue we'll give him on that to just. Um, <laughs> I think it's going back to this. Uh, what you've got to do to find find that mid foot and find that centre of the mix is you've got to be you've got to get comfortable. <coughs> like if you're not just really comfortable in the rack, you're probably not. In, your, in, in the best position possible, uh, unless you're super, super, super mobile. Yeah. Whereas yeah. I reckon what you can do that's just going to tidy up that, that rack position yeah. that dip even yeah. more is yeah. just position here, thinking more about getting that head almost looking behind you. Yeah. Um, I was talking to Ka Nicholas Cameron, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, yeah. The, we were on about like yeah, yeah. lock position, lock rack position, but you like head back, head back, yeah. through, whatever. And a, a simple cue that he that he gave that, that he said to think about the lock that I don't know why I've never thought of or heard is uh, just face up. I'm just keeping that face up. People, All the way to lock out. Well, just, ju just just even even in the rack as you initiate the dip and drive, mm -hmm. like just, just keeping it there. Yeah. Whereas right. with with yours, like you just subtly gazing forward and I just think you're just like kind of there and I just think just going there instead or even just a little bit behind I think it's just going to give you an easier time to be consistent with that bar path that you've just done there does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. so let's just go, let's just try that with you of um, face up pick a point on the ceiling So much better, man. Yeah. Like the, the whole thing, the the whole system. Ah, uh, feels good. Feels and then a, a way to exaggerate that that bar path even more would be, I'd say, have a bit of a play with it by yourself. Find that if we're trying to put like go perpendicular, perfectly vertical, which is logically what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, yeah, if that dip is yeah. just one of these things slightly out of degree, yeah. we're fighting to get, we're, we're always fight, like, that's the area the log is. We'll dip forward, like, inevitably, most of us. Yeah? So, I think if you, you just subtly think, of, obviously, yeah. you're, you're giving yourself an easier time to control it now to using your legs better, mm -hmm. and the, bar, the, dip, the dip's beautiful. So get the next one from the side, you can see. Um, you couple in it with the, fa the face up cue rather than gazing slightly forward. So, you, so you're making that, that rack position easier to kind of find the centre of the log through mid foot, etc. 
I just found a cue to help you with the dip mechanics and make sure that if anything, you want to be pushing it a little bit too far that way and that way. Oh, so when I'm actually driving into it. Yeah, because I find it that if you try and push it back, it's probably going to just, you're probably not going to be able to, yeah. Yeah, if you do, you do 10 reps trying to push it back a couple of degrees, you're probably going to hit nine that central. Whereas if you aim for the centre, you might hit three out of ten that's going forward. Does that make any yeah, sense? No, it does. No. Yeah. So you, so you, so let's just let's just see. This is the the, the last just, thing. The very top of the back. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, just just think instead of like right, I'm going to punch that log, log up in a straight line. Mm -hmm. Just think I'm going to punch it a couple of degrees behind me. I'm going to go there. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And just see see what it feels like. Every time it feels any The first one pulled me on my heels a wee touch, yeah. just punching it backwards. Maybe yeah, you do, well, you, maybe you, just went a little bit too much. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sure. I think it, I think it's just you. I, I just think it's a lot, lot more efficient pad. Yeah. You're not used to sit. You're you're used to stabilising that overhead position with it just, being with it being a little bit in front of you. The back. I just not built up stability there. Yeah. No, you're you're like going into this unknown zone that's I think is better. Yeah. And then. You're thinking, oh fuck me, this log's behind me now. Do you want do one more set? Yep. Exactly the same thing, and I think this will just instantly be, be better because you're not going to be uh, with it in terms of the overhead stability. We'll add in a little pause. Do two second pause overhead, where I want you to find that receive it, and I want you to find that kind of feel the the mid foot when you receive it. Right? Because I saw it on that first one. You went here, and you're like, shit, it's behind me. So then you're having to. Forward, tilt, forward. tilt forward. I reckon now, like logically, you've learned that this is actually a better bar path. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think this is going to be better. Let's go for two second pause overhead on each rep. I'm going to delete that last video. Come on. Burger King's calling me on the way out. Yeah, about three hours. Yeah, you want some? Link. Good. <laughs> 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 100% better on it. 